Are we live? It's starting soon. I just feel bad sending, being like, okay, go. <laughs> With like no notice, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, now we're live. Welcome, everyone. We're so glad that you joined us. We are back at the Pan-African Film Series that we do every second Saturday of the month. We are going to be watching a film together live as well. Uh, and my name is Monica. I'm with the AAPRP All-African People's Revolutionary Party. This is my comrade, Onya Sawu. Um, and we're going to be watching this film together and having a discussion. Onya Sabu, you want to share a little bit more about what we're going to be watching? Yes, thanks, Monika. So the film today is called Zala. It is from Senegal. Uh, it's actually a comedy. Um, it's in uh, French with subtitles. And basically, it's a movie about a wealthy businessman, a so-called pillar of the community, uh, who is actually very, very corrupt after the country has gained independence. Um, and so he's trying to, like, sell out his people and then also like hold on to traditional ways and it does not work out for him and so the movie is basically a satire commenting on that kind of like post-colonial figure that like sold out their people to realign with imperialism and like what the consequences of that mean for those people so it's like a it's pretty long it's like two hours long um but it should be a uh generate like a really rich discussion. Looking forward to it. Unfortunately, well, not fortunately, unfortunately, um, we have to go get some soil for the garden opening day tomorrow. So I will not be back <laughs> after the movie, but Monica will be here to facilitate the discussion. Yes, thank you so much Onya Sabu for picking up the soil. We're excited opening day at the Pan-African Community Garden. So if you are in Tiwa territory, make sure to join us at 5 p.m. There'll be lots of really great community there. Uh, excited. I love comedies, so I am excited to jump in with this with you all. So watch it, grab, grab your favorite snack, grab community, and then we'll be back for the discussion. Messieurs les députés, honorables collègues, jamais dans le passé, un Africain n'a occupé la présidence de notre Chambre. Nous devons prendre ce qui est à nous, ce qui nous revient de droit. Nous devons contrôler notre industrie, notre commerce, notre culture, en nos mots, prendre en main notre destinée. À notre peuple, nous devons montrer que nous sommes capables comme tous les peuples du monde. Nous sommes des hommes d'affaires. Nous devons prendre toutes les directions, les banques comprises. Notre marche est irréversible. 
c'est l'aboutissement de notre lutte pour une vraie indépendance. Ce jour d'aujourd'hui est un jour historique. C'est une victoire, une victoire de notre peuple. Ce sont les fils du peuple qui dirigent le peuple dans l'intérêt du peuple. Nous optons pour le socialisme, le seul vrai socialisme, la voie africaine du socialisme, le socialisme à hauteur d'homme. Notre indépendance est complète. Monsieur le ministre, Monsieur le député, honorable collègue, notre action révolutionnaire n'a pas été vaine. L'occupation de cette chambre de commerce et d'industrie est sanctionnée par un texte officiel de notre guide éclairé, Père de la Nation. Nous devons nous serrer les coudes et être solidaires, car nos adversaires n'ont pas désarmé. Eh bien, messieurs, pour sceller cette date mémorable, nous sommes conviés au mariage de notre honorable collègue Elaj Abdoukadir Bey, qui prend ce jour sa troisième épouse. Ah, la modernité ne doit pas nous faire perdre notre africanité. Et comment Vive l'africanité Vive l'africanité Vive notre africanité
Hélas, la parole est à vous. Eh bien, monsieur, à l'heure qu'il est, la cérémonie religieuse est finie. Pardonnez-moi, monsieur le président, monsieur le ministre, messieurs les députés et honorables collègues, je suis marié à nouveau par devoir. Je vous prie tous de me faire l'honneur d'assister aux festivités de ce soir. Je vous garantis que rien ne manquera. Monsieur le ministre, messieurs les députés, honorables collègues, la séance est levée. Je
ወቢያ ምንድ አልመች ስመሰይ ባኩል አልመች ተይተ አልመች እለብ ተያድና ነው ያመናል አንመች ኛ ትል ጀበረም ነው እንዶ ማንተም አንመች ተያንዱ በጀለ ደግ ይላል አንመች ደ እንደገም በግን ሐምሰ ማሐላብ ኮና ኛ ነሰባ ኛን ባል አይዶም ያን ነው ያላ ኃይ ኮን ኩነ ጀልት ወለ ስማ ደም ድከር ኛት ላይ ዶን ወለ ኛን ተን ደገ አምና ወርሰ ኩሎን ራም ፈመ ጀም ያ ደማ ኸማሎ ያረ ነው ነው ከር ጊ ሰከል ፊል ፊነ ክሊፕ ያክሙ ልብስ ቱል ነክ ሰምፋፋ አመት ፍደር ሎሉ ደግ ለራም ወይ ኸም ገን ዶን ከር ጊ ቡን ኮይ ቲተሮ ያላክ ሰፋፋታ ኮን ነግ ሌጊ ቡቲስ ኒዊ ኒኒ ጀም ሙኝ ራ mo gëna rafet man day la na xamna ya ma jonde yaay waye jikko wuté non ko lool ndax man dal limo wor mo di suma jëkkal du moko bokk mukk benen jigen mo wujj mu ci adu salut à tous bonjour ama ya ma rek ki joue toujours avec tes transcriptions de langue ayi bi la la def Man ngi rek bi te pare na bono Allah di yo len don xaal man ngi ñew lek ci di man sama ngalon ci xam man ne dom xam nga no man ti def dem ndax nit ñi dañ man dem lek fekk te suma teewule je jete go du don la rafet ci sama der dama man def rek dem gon ñepp yi ñom ñep kenn ba ñom ñep ay salo lan ci salo rama ci salo goni pourquoi sont ils salo donne moi tes raisons gor guy denc ñaara jabar dot lu wax deug nar fekk lay don waxtu malak ba me ñet répète voir si tu tiens à ton jugement gor ñaara jabar foku fekk nar fekk lay don na dot lu wax deug waxtu malak ba me ñet allah di nañ dem Rappelle-toi bien ma fille que dans cette maison c'est encore moi qui commande. Si tu n'es pas content, tu iras faire ta révolution ailleurs. Tu m'entends Allah di nañ dem way. Si nous les gens comme moi, moi ton père, qui avons bouté les colons et libéré le pays. La polygamie fait partie de notre patrimoine religieux. Allah di nañ dem légui ñu bouté. wacel dug ñu yoon tek ummi yaangi ci buntu kërëm ñu ak mom du la wañi dara Allah di yo da dafa melni li nga xamone def le reer del lo sir saxel xana da nga fatti ne ummi may magam may sa awo bu ko deti fatte nuyul mako
lolo nek jawata bo ningi fo moko gënal wa ni kamu dugg ci ah mariam oui eh mariam oui mama wa ma fa yaay aji awa ni kan dugg ci ma ci dus bi damay sang wuru ne mo wuru yalla ni mom rek mo nu duggal ci nek yalla jabar mo yey sa lopp bu betax la nga dem wutali mo wucc waye dañ ko digal ay guru watal bangay guru ruina sa raji gi daf ma añane ah dama ko gën nek ndaw rek motax gën nga nek xalel motax mu añane ma soxare ma yey sa lopp bi ba dem tak lo la ñett jabar waye da ngeen ko wété yeen ñaan muy bona ko soxor yep ay radji gi limu doon wax nga li nga bëgg wax lepp ba nopi waaw lan la len rek la le yegal nak fi bëgg mo fi wax fa le yu jëmit bëgg mo fay wax na nga ko dig bëggu lo fi wax bëggu lo fay wax E guru watal bangge guru ruinan. Mau mana sahaja jadi mau lu dua cinya teri jabat. Ah? Mau lu dah ngadem buti nyet jabat gaya kan? Nisan nyet terbo mau lan lah. Mau juga. Naga dek sisa kelen. Limu yore melu ni ni ramel lawa. Maman, ne veut pas descendre, elle préfère rester dans la voiture. Tant mieux pour elle. Waye man la, fofu kuma fa degg ni ma Marsa la wax. Kuma degg ci tiente gi ni ma Marsa, da nga bañ ma dem, da na fa dem ba mu neex ma indi, da nga nga yore alal di ka passer passer di ka maye ak di jaay ni am la indi jox ma. Li xam nga ne man li doyu ma de indi. Dede doli la wax. Eh guru watal bangge guru winan guru ben nop ku yo nga xamni bu jigen yeye sa nop rek mom la way jogol mi def rek sa jabar jala ci auto ba la wax momewul momewuma Nous n'y avons pas d'accord avec l'autre bille.
Les affaires, mon cher, les affaires. Vous savez, les affaires. Il y a de l'ambiance. C'est pas des filles qui manquent. Bien sûr, bien sûr. Mais les affaires, mon cher, les affaires. Les affaires. Et qu'est-ce que c'est ton affaire Mon affaire, c'est un dossier que je traite dans le tourisme. Oh, ça doit être intéressant, ça. Eh oui, je cherche quelqu'un pour traiter ce dossier. Et si je lui mets combien tu dois 10%. 10%. Comme il se demande toi 15% je marche. 15%. D'accord, 15%. Parole d'homme d'affaires. Parole d'homme d'affaires. Et comment est-ce que... Ah, j'ai pris par chèque. Surtout jamais. Je ne laisse jamais de traces dans mes affaires. Ah bon C'est toujours comptant compté. Je t'apporte le dossier demain matin. Avec... Euh, hmm? Tu m'as compris Ok. <rire> Follow Kali, for a week. I can follow. Abu Farango. ndoy
Madame B, vous permettez Ah, Président <rire> Une si belle créature est scellée. C'est dommage. Ça va. Madame, Je n'étais pas au courant du mariage dès l'âge, mais je lui ai apporté un cadeau. Ah, ça, c'est très bien. Mais tu étais en voyage en Suisse ou en Espagne En Espagne, je n'y vais plus. Pourquoi Il y a trop de nègres. On ne peut pas faire un pas sans en rencontrer. La négriture, hein Un oh. voyage. C'est la négriture. Mais dis-moi, elle est magnifique, ta nièce, là. Pardon Elle est magnifique, ta nièce. Évidemment, elle est magnifique. Vous ne voyez pas sa jolie coiffure Elle a une bouche. Unique dans les anales. Elle est à propre, elle a une bouche. Gourmande. Je lui offre une Mercedes. Pour les week-ends, je t'offre une villa. Au fait, week-end, comment ça se dit en anglais Au fait, comment on dit week-end en anglais Mettre de cérémonie. Vous avez des cigares, là, s'il vous plaît Oui. Vous donnez un cigare. Avec plaisir. Merci, mon ami. Vous avez déjà les mettre Ça ira. Je vais vous tout à l'heure. Mon ami, mon ami. Euh, comment dit-on week-end en anglais Week-end, c'est week-end. What Week-end Oh, week-end, c'est week-end. C'est week-end. Shit Monsieur le ministre, après. Je vous en prie, monsieur le député. Non, vous êtes le représentant du gouvernement. Vous êtes le peuple, monsieur. Alors, on reste. Alors, restons. <rire> Cinq ans, il se fait tard. Je pense qu'on peut rentrer maintenant, hein? Mais à votre convenance, monsieur le président. Très bien. Salut, honorable! <rire> Salut, Elash. Président, vous avez tout ce qu'il vous faut? On est bien servi. Il y a du tout. Je suis satisfait, je suis très heureux. Il va falloir que tu te retires avec ta femme. Ah oui. Hein? Tiens, j'ai amené quelque chose pour toi. Ça va te soulager. Tu le prends cinq minutes bien avant le combat. Non. 
Je ne veux pas de ça. Écoute, j'ai quelque chose qui est plus efficace. Ça vient de Bandu. Réaction instantanée. Tu le prends. Si c'est ça, le combat, avis, euh, je ne crois pas ces choses là C'est ridicule. <rire> Seulement pour te faire plaisir, je vais quand même l'essayer. Pour notre âge. Et nous. je t'en dirai quand même euh, le reste, l'efficacité. <rire> si je veux bien. Je veux dire que tu m'en parles. Mais un conseil. Il faut y aller doucement, doucement, molo, molo, tout doux. C'est que c'est une vierge. Président, vous ignorez encore que ma première était une vierge. La deuxième également. Et la troisième. Aussi. Oh, il est marrant, hein C'est ce que nous allons voir, <rire> matin. À la bon. première heure, vous verrez. Oui, tâche de nous dire le résultat de mes surtout. Sans faute, oui. comptez sur moi. Oui. Allez, bonne chance, vieux. Allez, bonne nuit. Allez, bonne nuit. Nous aussi, nous allons nous retirer. Merci. Ah, 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 ah. Je suis c'est Je ne sais pas si tu es un peu plus de temps. Je ne sais pas si tu es un peu plus de temps. Je ne sais pas si tu es un peu plus de temps. Je ne sais pas si tu es un peu plus de temps. Je ne sais pas si tu es un peu pl
Loi toi nak. Lengai toi gogol. Uti kula dimali. Wah itu toi fi di kuala. Akan darbab. Lumu najari. Je avec leurs eaux puantes. Ma lettre.
Bonjour, patron. Ah, bonjour, patron. Bonjour. Toutes mes félicitations pour la journée d'hier. La cérémonie a été la plus belle de l'année. Merci. Voulez-vous m'appeler le président Je veux le voir ici. C'est très urgent. Bien, monsieur. Vous m'attendez deux minutes. Hein. C'est entendu, Monsieur le Président. Bien. Bonjour, mademoiselle. C'est madame, Monsieur le Président. Euh, Excusez-moi, madame. Euh, il est là, le PDG. Monsieur Bey vous attend, Monsieur le Président. Merci. La recette a été excellente parce qu'on voit que tu n'as pas changé de tenue encore. C'est pas ça. Je ne suis pas arrivé à bander rien. Que dis-tu J'ai pas bandé cette nuit. Et ce matin, la badienne m'a fait comprendre que j'avais le khala. Merde alors. C'est pour cela que j'ai besoin de toi. Et qui t'a fait ça Président, on ne peut pas se débarrasser de ces défis humains. Ce n'est pas ça notre indépendance. Allô, passez-moi à Marcelo. Ah, c'est Amar. Bonjour, vieux président. Le président, oui, je suis ici chez l'âge Abdoukader Bey. Oui, d'accord, dis donc, tu peux m'envoyer le cadre serveur là Hein Oui, oui. C'est pour nous débarrasser de ces déchets humains là. Oui, les mendiants surtout, oui. Oui, c'est très mauvais pour le développement touristique. Très bien. Merci. Oui, oui, j'attends. Allez, ciao. Et là, c'est fait. Espérons qu'ils seront 
Evan qui est très loin. Merci, Président. Et qui soupçonne-tu Qui Une de tes femmes. Laquelle et pourquoi Elles ont tout ce dont elles ont besoin. Je te demande que faire. Elage, j'ai confiance en toi parce que nous sommes des amis. Longue date. Ceci est un secret. J'ai un bon marabout, un très bon marabout. Si tu veux, on peut aller le voir. Seulement, il demande cher. Son prix est cher. Cher. Qu'importe les prix. Je veux le devenir homme. Donc, bon, une minute. J'ai mon conseiller derrière. Je vais me débarrasser de lui d'abord. Euh, du Paul Durand, euh, vous pouvez disposer. Je vous remercie, monsieur le président. Bien. Ah, mais dans une heure, hein, au bureau. Parfait. Je suis un homme qui Je ne sais pas si je suis un peu plus de temps. Je ne sais pas si je suis un peu plus de temps. Je ne sais pas si je suis un peu plus de temps. Je ne sais pas si je suis un peu plus de temps. Je ne sais pas si je suis un peu pl
Il m'a top tout, il faut que je m'en fasse. Wow, je ne sais pas si tu n'as pas de problème. Oui, oui. Tu n'as pas de problème. Ah, c'est ça. Je suis venu à la maison de mon père. Je suis venu à la maison. La maison? Je suis venu à la maison. Je ne sais pas si tu m'as fait. Yeah. Badu yo. Kan man mi. Lo de do man nako wat yal de do man. Man lo lo atu no moko sa? Wa. Ben ke waro kutang sa papu bo? Lo lo kata no man muno moko. Lo dan muno moko. Tup gulo mo kutang ke mo? Nyak nga kya sa nak do. Yo nak nga atu no togi. Sa bay to. Nga yo kuku khala. Lo de do man te la kuma sa te. D'accord, non, non D'accord, non, oui. Ok. La femme, je me reçois. Je suis venu à la maison. Voilà. Ok. Vous êtes venu à la maison. Vous êtes venu à la maison. Oui, oui, oui. Vous êtes venu à la maison. Ok. Vous êtes venu à la maison. Sala li jine, wala li jine Midi si jine Moussa, midi si jine Maimouna, midi si jine Sangal kam Kofir taku si wana kan kofir til hore mom Suma wayak sa jane duk Suba soye wo dinga romba sa jane ba sa jane romba yo Ota ja Sa khalapan yini Duma baga wir Fa juu sema taka diki fiti hii, ili pula malaji mafaya lakuti taka wai. Presidenti mimi hamne sana wach, dumoni tu chakani, tete sumo kuna dembe tazo kanyo. Wana dugu, na kwa dengi semani, mwenye mimi semani, mato kama mwenye kufin na kwa dimi likongri yalla. Obala manya tu, jum, ha 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 ha, jum, obala manya tu. Salaam Muhammad wa Salaam Muhammad. Suma wai, ya mahamu wai sa waji khamnam. Awa uma kuma maas fi. Did it. Ina ala joh. Butel di. Dankwa yi sango. Sakanam toy, say nop, yip toy. So yi dam chi sahna si. Nala joh, dom bagi tu seperti nai jor ngoko ini. Dom bagi nak, tu sendiri ngoko ini tak. Oh balam hanya tu, jum. Gising lagi. Je ne vous parle pas de ce que je veux dire. Si tu es un peu de temps, tu es un peu de temps. Tu es un peu de temps. Tu es un peu de temps. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Jam, jam fana nem. Jam, jam. Ia fana nem sejam mana? Gua iman fana nemos. Ah, kau? 
Alors que je man ma dig ma tok fi ma te te de sama kaw la dek xale bi yuxu ma defa ne te de na ndeka te tedul ma dem ci suba gi dem di len seti jekkal gi na man dañ manuma ci dara i goor tay yi da kendu ci goor man day bi ci ko di nelaw ma be borset nak dama xamne jank bu ne tollu ku ñuko jebal bala borset su sidit war na jok ci deug ndengade <coughs> Nar ba bis bunek mu dur dur in bir kergi ndok mi ken fa yuko legi na kalis la 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 pur fa yulo yuk am na ni nang mom sa 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 nya tel bi jof le jugu li do yuma gulo jugu an kana do nyo fa Oumi, je t'en prie, délivre-moi. Je divorcerai la troisième épouse. Je te donnerai tout ce que tu veux, auto, villa et des vacances en Europe. Hey Vous avez l'air de l'air Eh, qu'est-ce qu'il faut dire Qu'est-ce qu'il faut dire Qu'est-ce qu'il faut dire Hein Ah, vous savez que vous êtes un homme qui est un homme qui est un homme qui est un homme. Waye buka mak mak defe gis kode. Mouni jay. Yusak gis nga sabob. Yangi omo 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 bu mari deta. Lil mudon. Yuwa nga seti doktor di. Waye nang ma yegal lo lo xa mogu lo lo sama yon ne kuchina. Lu waye rende chi solo kholay nak. Lo lo sama yon ne kuchina. Sama sama ker nala fufek nang fanyo tay tingon sama mome sama mome de na ko jil bumu jeh dara du chi des nak ta dara du sed man kham ngam sama dara du sed la wa se chi chi du rus na nang ko yek rus na jeh na tak ngon sama ker jamama Yaburam jamana, nanga ame jiko e kilifa ku. Bata kol nyobo kuchalat, mu amuso wa e buhole do minyusur na kol ba rabat ame jiko e kilifa ku. Kalau 
J'ai pensé à ta proposition d'hier au sujet de ton marabout. Tu sais, Modou, je ne crois plus à ces marabouts. Mais celui-ci, patron, vous pouvez le croire. C'est le marabout de mon village. Il a fait des miracles. C'est un saint homme. Je te fais confiance. Allons-y. Vous ne le regretterez pas, patron. À votre service. Il 
modi mamu sala tatal biri tatal biri fal ma tagulin fa yalla jekkilin fa mamar wala cekk mali ibn sama gawe se kemo kew fekke tiro ratuk bakkan sama ken do xob fa bab new xala ñen jaxata jaxata ci 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 tambe du tambe du dalame dalame ci mbay te rahmani te reyi mi tanga te gorta jigen modu mak te daw patron ku tagat modu patron modu patron modu patron delu sa ne kat gor way ngane ma delu sa ne kat gor xolal Waaw, <tuk> 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 Assalamu alaikum. Ah, bien. Fajar bien. Alhamdulillah, lo bëggon lepp amna. Alhamdulillah. Dilu suat na nekat gor. Hein? Nang ko xam. Ha, lo de de wat. Bi. Nak nga def yow? Ma ngi rek. Ta sa nekat tay pot de. Lolu moy lan. Ma xassa dekkar yow. Ni jaay, di platform. vision de la jab kader bey hein oui d'ailleurs j'ai reçu 
J'ai reçu une notification du directeur de la Société Nationale Vivrière. Oui. Ah ah. Bien. Tu permets Messieurs, j'ai son excellence au bout du fil. Il est dans la même situation que vous tous. Les banques lui refusent son fonds de roulement. Et il demande une réunion immédiate du groupe. Et comment Pourquoi pas Nous sommes entièrement d'accord. Nous sommes d'accord. D'accord. Oui. Allô Excellence, c'est d'accord. Oui, oui, la réunion va être tenue tout de suite. Oui. Bien, merci. Allez, bonne journée. Hein? Ok. Messieurs, c'est fait. Vous allez recevoir vos convocations. Bien. Et surtout, voilà je vous souhaite une bonne journée. Merci. 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 Comment vous avez-vous fait? Je <coughs> Ah, Raman, ma fille, assis toi Alors, la santé Jamais. Tes études, ça marche comme tu veux Je ne pas. Ah, c'est Ça va,
chez ma fille, bois. Ah, mon bras, eh bien. Tu sais que c'est ma boisson préférée. J'en bois au moins deux litres par jour. Rien de grave à la maison. Yamrek. C'est ta mère qui t'envoie Dérée, papa. Je ne sais pas si tu es un peu plus de temps. Tu es un peu plus de temps. Qu'est-ce que tu cherches à comprendre et qu'est-ce que tu n'as pas compris Papa, je ne sais pas si tu es un peu plus de temps. Je ne sais pas si tu es un peu plus de temps. Est-elle malade Oui, oui. Fébre ou fébre, je ne sais pas. Mais papa, tu es un peu plus de temps. Je ne sais pas si tu es un peu plus de temps. Je le sais, ma fille. Je vais y passer, tu le lui diras. Je ne sais pas. Je ne sais pas. Au fait, Rama, pourquoi quand je te parle en français, tu me réponds en Wolof Et toi, ma fille, tu n'as besoin de rien Papa, je ne sais pas si tu as besoin de rien. Je ne sais pas si tu as besoin de rien. Salamalekum,alwayu,mangada,ulila,wow,Allah,jilukam,sabutubi amatul marsendis,wow,tejelbo,nengadielusifek,nyarifan,aha,dakhamgama,wow,orop,lajelisuamatsendis,tegela,
Président, pourquoi suis-je l'objet d'une réunion extraordinaire Assis-toi, Elage, et calme-toi. Alors, et ton cras là Fini, parti. J'en suis très heureux pour toi. L'âge, tu causes beaucoup de préjudice à tes camarades. Quel préjudice Calme-toi, écoute-moi. Les convocations sont parties. Il est souhaitable que tu assistes à la réunion. Mais, un ami, je te conseillerais d'aller voir le sous-directeur de la banque. D'ailleurs, je vais lui téléphoner avant que tu arrives. Vas-y. Dépêche-toi. Allez, ciao. Merci, président. C'est ça. Sans cela, je n'arrive pas à dormir chez moi. C'est vrai, c'est comme nous tous d'ailleurs. Ouais. Bon, grand, je t'écoute. Cours, j'ai besoin de 500 000 francs en fonds de roulement. J'ai avec moi un projet d'expansion dans le quartier des Jaïnes. Si j'ai là un dossier te concernant. Mais Elage, qu'est-ce que tu as fait des centaines de riz de la Société Nationale Vivrière Où est l'argent Consultez mon c'est du sérieux. Je voudrais implanter des points de vente dans tout le quartier. J'aimerais avoir une avance. Quand je crois que ton train de vie dépasse tes rentrées. Mais j'étais malade. Ton khala. <rire> c'est fini, parti. Ah bon? Maintenant, c'est comme ça. Ah, la bonne heure. Fais-moi confiance. Je suis très dynamique pour le commerce et les affaires. Et membre de la chambre, tu sais cela, mon petit. Oui, mais moi aussi je dois te parler sérieusement. Tu sais, il faut que j'en parle à mon boss. Je dois l'avertir de toute façon. Téléphone-moi, disons, après-demain. Vraiment, je compte sur toi. Ok, ça va. Je sais que tu es très efficace. Téléphone-moi après demain. Une petite intervention de ta part suffirait pour combler, vous comprenez alors. Euh... Bien. 
Merci d'être venu. Ah, à propos, ton troisième mariage, c'était vraiment une réussite. Du tonnerre, je te félicite sincèrement. Merci. Nous sommes au complet Bon, nous pouvons alors commencer. Je rappelle qu'à l'ordre du jour, il n'y a qu'un seul point. Un seul. K et la Jabou Kadir B. Monsieur le Président, la parole est à vous, Kébé. Excellence. Monsieur le député, chers honorables, il faut être objectif et avoir du courage. Et l'âge Abdoukader B a abusé de notre honneur d'homme d'affaires. À cause de lui, depuis des semaines, notre groupement subit des affronts, des insultes, train de vie féodale, incurie, gabagie, incompétence. Les banques nous refusent des crédits, des fonds de roulement, des découvertes. Non contents de nous traîner dans la boue, ils osent émettre des chèques sans provision. Quand tu fais des centaines de riz, vendu, et l'argent, <rire> il se paye une troisième femme. Je demande qu'il soit purement et simplement exclu de notre groupement et poursuivi. Quelqu'un a-t-il quelque chose à dire avant de passer la parole à Elage Non Elage, la parole est à vous. Mes chers collègues et amis, pourquoi pas Je voudrais savoir ce qui, dans mon attitude, choque tant. Je suis, paraît-il, la brebis galeuse du troupeau. De quoi m'accable-t-on De quoi Et qui sommes-nous, si ce n'est de minables commissionnaires, moins que des sous-traitants Nous ne faisons que de la redistribution des restes que l'on veuille bien nous céder. Nous sommes tous des cultureux du monde des affaires. Oh non Je non, 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 non Un peu de calme, un peu de calme, un peu de tenue, messieurs. Nous sommes des hommes d'affaires, ne l'oubliez pas. Nous ne sommes pas des bébés, voyons. Discutons dans le calme et la dignité. Et là, je se crois autant colonial. C'est nous qui gouvernons ce pays. Et qui collabore avec nous, grande gueule. Je m'a bagarre, je m'a bagarre, le petit Olof. Monsieur Ndor, monsieur le président. En français, cher ami, la langue officielle est le français raciste, sectaire, réactionnaire. De la civilisation, messieurs, de la civilisation, du calme et l'âge, vous pouvez parler. Mais en français, même les insultes dans la plus pure tradition de la francophonie. Oui, 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 en français. Merci, Président. Chacun de nous, ici, présent, 
est un salaud. Je dis bien salaud. Pire que moi, sinon plus. Nous sommes des crabes dans un même pays. Et tant que nous sommes, nous avons tous émis des chèques sans provision. Quel le trafic des quotas de vie Et alors seulement, comme parle de Chegeres, nous avons également détourné des vivres destinés aux nécessiteurs. L'armée et même les Cerbères, officiels et secrets, sont à nos Écoutez-le. La démocratie, l'égalité et la justice sont des mots que nous ignorons par habilité. Et là encore devant nous, ces mêmes gens, ici assis, qui m'écoutent, apprentis sorciers et mal initiés dans les affaires, se permettent encore de crier sur les toits. Contre oh, du silence, du silence, messieurs. N'oubliez pas que nous sommes des hommes d'affaires. Nous ne sommes pas des bébés. Continuez là. C'est fini, président. Merci. Avoue quand même qu'elle existe la démocratie. C'est expliqué en toute liberté. Je n'en pas. Bon, messieurs, nous allons passer au vote. Monsieur le conseiller. Faites le tour. On va mettre les bulletins là-dedans. Passons au dépouillement. Exclu. 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 Permettez-moi de vous présenter M. Kelly, le nouvel adhérent de notre groupement. Soyez le bienvenu, M. Kelly. Asseyez-vous, M. Kelly.
Et la jambe de Caverbé Oui. C'est moi Vous voyez signer là Signer quoi Voulez-vous signer par ici, s'il vous plaît Merci. Monsieur et la jambe de Caverbé Devant trois témoins, nous vous avons signifié la saisie exécutée au nom de la société vivrière nationale. Tout va bien, matériel et numéraire sont saisis. Mais, 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 monsieur. Chef, sortez-lui une chaise. Prenez-moi les clés de la Mercedes. Mademoiselle. C'est madame, monsieur. Veuillez m'en excuser. Voulez-vous prendre vos affaires et me remettre les clés du magasin Chef Tirez-moi le rideau. Savez-vous conduire une voiture Mercedes Non, maître. Et vous Non. Et vous Non. Adina 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 Bonne chance. Ah, Je ne sais pas si 
Nen, ay dafa bëng ngor am dem. Qu'est-ce qui se passe ici? Y a un chef. Père a des invités. On nous a prévenu qu'il y a une rébellion ici. Voyez vous-même, monsieur, c'est moi qui reçois. Ces gens-là sont indésirables dans ce secteur. Mais nous respectons la propriété privée. Legi <laughs> Gun dundu napa kati? Gun dundu ligai kati? Tegis ganyom nye dekel neng neng dundu leng fat neng te dunyu fai lempo. Alagi wakal futi eku ni dum kiti gumbalo mi lawak. Aiwa. Hello, everyone, and welcome back as we transition. Just say it was. Sorry about that. YouTube kept playing uh, how it does and plays the next video that's there. So, so sorry about that. Um, and so, wow, there was a lot that happened in that video, um, that film, uh, Zala. And so I'm going to try to get back on the YouTube channel um, for AAPRP, wanting to have this space to have a discussion and folks to share their thoughts um, about the film. There was a lot there to unpack. Um, There was a lot there to unpack and great to listen. Sorry about that, I wasn't in the YouTube and I see there's some comments there. So I'm gonna be working on deleting those comments that are there. So please excuse those things that are um, in the live chat, working on doing that right now. Um, so, wow, there was a lot, um, a lot to unpack there. Uh, so 
It was really interesting around how the film started and it was talking about um, socialism, like African socialism, right? And like the independence and the ability for um, like the celebration of independence. However, you could see that it was still being controlled by um, like colonial views and colonial values. Um, so that was really interesting to me um, how that was happening. Um, the other thing that I think about, sorry y'all, the spammers are all in here. Um, so sorry about that, all the spam that's in here. So give us uh, some time to remove um, all the spam that's been popping up in here. So what are some of you all's thoughts um, as you watch the film and some of the things that pop up? Um, I know some of the things that I want to share a lot was about the comments of like, um, like you think you're European and what does that mean and what does that look like, like of stolen wealth, um, the, um, the, the misconceptions of like um, manhood and what does that mean and what does that look like. Uh, so there was a lot there. So I'm in the comments now if anyone has uh, anything to share. Um, yes, that was a wild ending. That was a lot happening in the ending there. Um, and so one, uh, um, one thing that I, um, so El Hajib, he had three different wives and it was really interesting in the film. And we really only get a glimpse at uh, the first wife, uh, Ajar, and the second was Omi. It, um, and I might be mispronouncing their names, but we really get a glimpse of like, in a way them trying to still have autonomy in a marriage where like, they're not, they're not, they're not happy um, because of like having to be in a polygamy relationship. And so what was really interesting to me um, for, uh, is like the way the communication was in that and them still trying to have autonomy in that space, which is definitely like really complex given like the, the like rules of polygamy, like there's nothing that they could do if he takes a third, fourth or, you know, um, or, you know, fifth wife. And so like, they really didn't have weigh in on what that looked like. And Aja continued to say things like being patient and wanting um, things to wait and appreciate the radicalness of her daughter Rama uh, in the film um, of like, um, like trying to support her mom navigate through having tough dialogue um, with her husband, um, El Hajib, which is like an unseen to have that type of dialogue. So that was really interesting. And um, you could tell like the conditioning of like, this is what a woman should do. This is what a woman shouldn't do. And we saw that in Nagum, the third wife. So her mom um, was like sharing things about the role of her as a woman. Um, she said some things like men and women are not equal. Um, he is the master and you must make yourself available. Um, you should never raise your voice to him. Your role is to be submissive. And like she was saying those things that uh, colonialism um, and even religions have tried to condition women in. And we see in society, it's full of patriarchy, right? And, and the uh, mom of the third wife, uh, Najogon, was like uplifting those values um, was uplifting these values, um, of, like, of, of, like, uh, like, women being oppressed, right, because, the, like, those are the conditions in the society in this film that this film is portraying, um, so I found that really interesting how, uh, and like each time, like, he was, like, also going for a younger wife, right, so he had an older wife, and she was younger. And then the one after Nagon, the third wife was extremely um, um, young. Um, 
And so that was really interesting, but the conditioning of like the role of women and the role of not of, and I even like experienced that too, like growing up a little bit about what our role is and what our, um, what our role should be and having to decolonize and not like see my role um, as being like submissive and those kind of things. And I think a lot of women have, you know, gone on that journey just because society and patriarchy does um, uplift um, the roles of, it, it makes, it distinguish roles when like before colonization, um, those roles weren't necessarily always distinct. There was like shared roles um, in those spaces. Um, so yeah, I don't know what you all's thoughts are. If you wanna share some, I'm right now only in the YouTube channel, but if you wanna share some of your thoughts um, about that. And thanks for folks being in the comments and also deleting comments as well and sharing with comrades who came at the wrong, came at an awkward station trying to figure out what was going on and what we were watching. So thanks for people who um, have been in the comments um, sharing. Appreciate y'all. Any thoughts on that or anything else? Um, speaking of Rama, the daughter, for example, uh, who I believe it was Amil Cabral, likes picture even in her room, um, um, like, you know, she was sharing about how, like, being very expressive and sharing, um, like, the views around, like, oppression and patriarchy and that she was not going to choose the life of like sharing a husband and that was her view. Um, and that was really important to her and really trying to like be supportive of her mom, like being like the first wife, um, being the first wife and what like her, she could see her mom suffering and being able to go to um, her dad to try to attempt the conversation. So it was really interesting how she was trying to navigate um, how she was trying to navigate uh, having this conversation that was important for her to have with her dad at the same time, trying to like be respectful of like of her dad. So I know that's really hard to navigate in those spaces. And I think she did it. I think she did it really well. She didn't necessarily say everything that she wanted to say, but it was, she was, it felt like she was trying to at least share some things um, and at, at the same time being respectful. So that's not an easy task ever to do. Like how, how do we have respect for our elders and navigate those hard conversations um, that are close to our hearts, right? Cause she could see her mom suffering and that was really hard and heavy on her. Um, so like just appreciation for her to try to like uplift that um, because her mom wasn't gonna have that conversation because she continued to say to her daughter, Rama, and even to the second wife, um, just be patient, just have patience, um, which isn't necessarily, um, which was a different frame and how to problem solve um, those tough situations. Um, what else was there? Oh, the other thing, um, and I'm in the YouTube, if folks want to chime in on anything, totally chime in. Um, but the other thing is um, there were several examples that El Haji, uh, Haji um, was really um, what's the word, like uplifting European oppressive values. And even the mom of the third wife, uh, Nagon, even shared with him, like, you think you're Europeans. And some examples I think about um, that was uplifted about like, you're thinking Europeans, you're acting like you're Europeans because he, they had a tradition in their, um, in their culture that you like straddle 
the straddle something. And like, he was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that at all. And so an example that I, uh, several examples that I saw is like the tossing money to your own people, which at the end we learned they were called undesirables. So like the tossing, like they were, like they were peasants, like they were beggars, like that's the, your people who are suffering, who have a lot of different disabilities going on, but seeing them as beggars. So like, that was an example. Um, another example is like calling the police on them, right? Like having the president do it. Like um, he said something about them. I'm, I wonder if, I can't recall if he said undesirable humans. I'm, I definitely will find it in my, in my notes. Um, but like just the language that he's using to portray his own people, right? Just the colonization of like not seeing your people in need, um, but seeing them as othering, right? Like classism and trying to other them because they're, they're not in that like classism structure where he's at. And then the other piece that I, that was really uplifted is like the oppression of language. So they're in France and they're speaking French and not Wolof, I believe is how you pronounce that, like not speaking the um, African indigenous language of the people, but really like elevating France and like really, you know, looking down on his daughter for uh, talking, um, for like sharing those, sharing that uh, talking in her own native language and really wanting to um, use the language of like the colonizers um, and, and elevate Fr French. And so those are some of the things that I could see attest to where the mom speaks about, um, you're, you're acting like European, you're a European and you're not a European. So that was really interesting. And there are some comments in the chat coming out. Thank you so much. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I definitely, normally when I watch the film, I watch it like three times, but this is my first time. So I miss, I miss something. Um, uh, yeah, so that was really interesting. Um, the, okay, you were saying, let's see, in fact, my family friend, oh, awesome. Oh, awesome. Um, Lee's talking about, or Leah's talking about, um, um, they want to go back to watch it from the beginning because it was in and out. Um, um, and that they have uh, been to Senegal. In fact, my family and friend is named Ngon. I, I might be even pronouncing that. Um, I'm trying to see if I saw any of the same di uh, dynamics there. Also, I'm not among that class of people. They are working class people. Thank you so much for sharing that. So it was really interesting about um, like that dynamic. The other thing is, oh yeah, he called them human rubbish. Like, so he asked the president to get the human rubbish um, from out of like that business area. And even the woman who was working there was like, having like disgust of um, like their, um, where the water was going. And so, um, and whoo, these, these people are, these spammers are really uh, out here. They are, um, they must have several, several accounts because they are out here today. I think I got all the comments like hid and removed, but I'm trying y'all, bear with me. And so um, even the president like utilized that same language and then they they displaced them. There was uh, one of them, you know, we saw uh, with a visual, visibly um, actually hurt um, where he's like watch, washing the car of the Mercedes, but they displaced them so far in a deserted area. And many of them didn't even have the ability um, to necessarily walk on two legs. They might've had one, but they had many different um, um, visible um, things going on. And they just displaced them and, and put them in a, like a deserted place, um, which reminds me of what society does today, right? To people who are um, unsheltered, Right, we see this here in Tiwa territory very often is the displacement of people. And it's like, you're acting like they don't exist in your community 
um, if you can't see them and just displacing them, like where are they supposed to go instead of just addressing the root causes of why folks are, um, um, are outside, like with no home, with no shelter, with no food, like what are the conditions that create that? Um, and that's okay if you missed the whole movie, um, you could definitely rewatch it. It was, the ending was really interesting, I agree. Um, the other thing is, I'm not sure if any of you saw it, I might've missed it, is what was the shift in, uh, in El Hejal? Um, uh, Hajid, what was the shift? Because when he was called to this meeting and the meeting was with the president and like all these leaders to determine, um, like they're like the like the hoarders of wealth in this space. And he is almost like embodying Rama, embodying principles and values that are rooted in community. And I'm like, where was this shift? That the shift only happened because now he was being impacted um, in regards to impacted, meaning that he would be, um, the vote was basically to exclude him out of this good old boys club that hoards money and are businessmen and and run the like government right and they're under this false impression that um they're uh what's the word that they're governing themselves right under like an african socialism when that's like not true at all and so he's in the meeting and he's even talking and talking in the African language there in, a, in a, um, Wolof. Um, and they're like, speak French, you need to speak French. And so it was really interesting how he like shifted to this radical uh, space of like, we all have taken from the community. We all have security guards paid out of our pockets. And he's basically elevating the truth and they're feeling attacked. They're like, no, no, they don't want to hear it. Right. Like, about like the harm that they're creating as businessmen, governing men um, in this area. Um, and so I didn't see what made him shift. Um, if anyone has any thoughts, um, I, I just thought the shift happened because, oh, now he's gonna be excluded from this space. And so, because he's gonna be excluded, now he's able to speak like the truth. And to me, there was great symbolism in that because it was like, oh, the petty bourgeois, they know what they're doing, right? They know that they are playing the roles of oppressors. They know they're upholding white supremacy culture. And now that he could be excluded, which means that he would lose his business, that he would um, change class, that he's now trying to like advocate um, to stay in the space. So. That was really interesting to me. But if anyone has any other thoughts about that, please post them. But uh, if if anyone has any thoughts like why he shifted, I felt like it was like, oh, now because it's close to home, now he's able to speak about um, the conditions of the community, like the conditions of suffering and how the government creates those conditions. Um, yeah. In the meeting, I think there was really huge symbolism because once the vote happened and that each, it was a unanimous exclusion, like he was excluded from um, like this, this group that governs their society and that has access to wealth and access to resources. It was really interesting how like the symbolism of, of opening his briefcase clowning him right like mocking him of what's in there taking the briefcase from him um shooing him off like they were like shooing him off like shoot go 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 like he was a a peasant right i'm just going to use their words and um like the stripping of power like i'm going to strip your power and you are now not part of this group and they were, he was replaced immediately. Like the replacement was waiting outside. And it reminded me how this is why we as Africans fighting for our revolution, um, fighting for our liberation, 
must not be aligned with the petty bourgeois because um, and must not be aligned with um, white supremacy, they are ready to replace us like that, right? Um, and so often the petty bourgeois feels like they are um, more connected to like millionaires and billionaires when they're actually more connected to us because we're all impacted by um, capitalism and colonialism. So we're actually more closely aligned than they realize. And I feel like that was also the symbolism that El Hajid saw as well as like, even though he had to be stripped of everything in order to see it, he was able to see like he was actually more connected to the people um, in, in, the, in, the, in the language he was expressing during the meeting. Um, the other thing that I wanna go back to that happened in the film is um, there was a security guard who took the money, the coin from the, from the um, floor that belonged to the people when they were throwing it and tossing it at them. Then he, the security guard stole the money out of, um, out of the bag of a man where, where the community came together as a collective. And his responsibility was to purchase food and bring the food back to the community. And they are, the community is being um, impacted by a drought by famine, by different things. So this is a really cruel, uh, really important and critical role that this community member is taking on. He's taking on the responsibility um, of the collective money generated together to bring it back. That way the community um, has resources. And I just also thought about the beauty of the community coming together to provide for each other. And we also saw that with the, individuals who have different disabilities, like after they're able to get out of the, the desert, like this deserted place that they were put, play, displaced at and just tossed there, um, they are um, drinking like milk together and eating bread together and they're in community together and they're sharing and it's just so beautiful. Um, and so um, it reminded me of the stolen land, the stolen people, the stolen resources. And because all of these things have been stolen from Africa, Africa, from our homeland, we see that our people are suffering in Africa, anywhere people are, that are African, um, African descent, um, are part of the African diaspora, I should say, um, are oppressed. So no matter where our people are, they're oppressed. And there's lots of suffering happening to our people. And so that was some symbolism for me. Like they just, they stole, he stole it like it was nothing. And then the heaviness of the individuals um, whose role was in responsible for bringing the food back. Like, I can't even like think of like, you know how much suffering your community is doing are you're enduring and now you have nothing to bring back to them like and he was so um he didn't know how to go back and the others around the table um are not the table but the others in the circle were sharing and expressing like you can go back you can just tell them what happened you know just share what's go what happened and share what's going on and so um and so that wasn't realistic for him to share that he just felt like I can't go back. If I if I'm still here, they have hope. They have hope that I'm going to come back with resources. Um, and thank you for letting us know that long French loaves and tea are popular there for breakfast. Um, thank you for that information. Um, um, Lee also pointed out in the comments that possibly uh, El Hajid. Um, aligned himself um, with the people because he was no longer uh, useful to the petty bourgeois. I really like the way that you put that because it's like, if you're useful and you're used as a tool and uplifting these values that harm our people, you're in, you're valued, right? You're valued to them. 
But now that he was no longer being able to be used as a tool for the petty bourgeois, he, that might have been the shift of why he aligned himself with the people. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you for that. Um, the other thing is, uh, let's see. Ah, so the the Zala, like the name of the movie, um, the driver of the Mercedes who um, like knew someone in his own village um, that could support like as a medicine man, as a healer to support with the Zala that um, El Hajid was experiencing. So basically he couldn't have an erection, right? That's what the whole, that's what that was about. And he didn't know why. And so something that he, he, he shared with him is what one hand removes, one hand, one can put back. And so that he was, his name is Surjit Madar. And so he was expressing that he had told him that when he was um, in the village. And then he also expressed that um, when, so now he's in like the, in the city and he gives the check back to him. Um, because the check didn't, he, he wasn't paid, right? He wasn't paid because the, the businessman, businessman like had no funds in the bank to pay him. And so his Zala was put back on him because he didn't keep the end of his deal. And Sergid Madar did, but he didn't keep the end of his deal. He wasn't, he wasn't paid. And so he got his Zala back. Um, and then, uh, what was really interesting is the Mercedes driver who I didn't get his name, like he was supporting um, El Hajid with like care and compassion. Like he was just, El, ha El Hajid was like torn. Like um, it, it had symbolization of like, um, I don't wanna use the word brokenness cause I don't think that we're broken. I think that we're all whole. Um, and so, but he was just like, just down, down, down to the ground. You could see it in his body language, in his face. He was just, he was just down. Everything was being stripped from him. Right. And so um, then uh, the, the community members that were displaced and I'm, I'm laughing because of just the symbolism, I was thinking about it. Right. They, they go into his house and one of them's like, uh, or they, they forced their way into his house, I should say. And one of them's like, we got to go. They're going to call the security on us. And he was like, he's not going to call the security on us. We're his guests. He needs his Zala back, right? Um, um, so there was a lot of comedy that was going on. And um, when the security guard came, he's there like, nope, these are my guests. And, um, and, um, and so they were there drinking like some beverages, eating some food, nourishing themselves. And then like, we hear this whole story of what happened. Um, El Haji, he displaced the Beye family. So he displaced them by taking their property. And um, he ended up, the individual ended up um, in prison. And he was sharing how being in prison is better than being on the street because at least in prison, you're getting, you have access to medicine, you have access to food and you have access to, um, you're not paying taxes, right? Um, versus when you, you have no resources, when you're just left like in that society that doesn't um, support the needs of the people because all they're doing is, is exploiting and oppressing their own people, right? Which colonizers taught us how to do. So we got to unlearn that. And so they, um, in order for him to get his Zala back, he, uh, they're spitting on him. I don't know what that symbolism meant, but that's what happened. Um, um, and so that was just like a really, really interesting ending, if anyone has any thought on that. Um, but it was really interesting how it was full circle. So El Hajid did anything and all he could to have wealth and resources and didn't care how it impacted the people. So the Bayev family, and we don't know the whole, whole story, but we get a snapshot of it. But imagine what happens 
when your property is stolen, you're thrown in prison, um, like your whole family, the whole, Bayez, the whole family was impacted. We don't know how many people it was, and he was sent to prison for nothing, right? And we know that because we know like prisons are nothing but continued enslavement of our people. Um, and so, and we, and and um, and so it came full circle. So the reason why he had the zala was because um, the individual who was talking about for the Bayef family heard that he was getting married to a third wife and he did that. So it was like full circle. So you are being, you, um, El Hajid, what he did was create so much harm and destruction on his people that it became full circle. And he was like, you can get your Zala back. You can regain your, um, regain not your dignity it was saying something else but you can regain those things and as long as you let us do this and they did that and we can assume that he um is a, a it would consume like what the movie what how the movie would have continued is like he's not in that class structure of the petty bourgeois right he probably got his zala back um his wife was like this is his first wife um She's there visually really crying. Um, and to me, I was like reflecting on, I wonder if it felt like the dignity of, um, of him being stripped away, but it didn't, it's not as much as like the impact of like the, the whole entire family, like everything stolen from them, put on the street, no housing, no resources, some of them in prison. So it was really interested in interesting, um, like playing the role of the oppressor and now you get to experience just a glimpse. It wasn't a whole lot right in the movie of like um, what it's like to not be in that class. I, you know, at the end, uh, there's a question about did they show or discuss how or who they went to get the Zala? Um, they only showed it at the end. So we know that it was it was, um, he lost it and that the medicine man, uh, Sig Sigur Madar gave it back and we never knew who took it at first. So um, the daughter asked, asked her mother, the um, Rama asked her mother, the first wife, uh, Aja, if she did it. And she's like, nope, I didn't do it. And we find out at the end, the Beye family, the man of the Beye family, he was the one who took the Zala. Um, so um, that, that's kind of what I got from the movie. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to rewatch it. It was really good. Um, but that's, that's all I got. I don't know if anyone has any thoughts that had some really com uh, comedy moments. It was really, really interesting. And um, even like the part where um, his property is being stripped away, right? And the guy asked, can anyone um, drive a Mercedes? And none of them can drive a Mercedes. And so they're like pushing this Mercedes down the road rather than just asking the driver to drive it to a, a place. It's like, they're still in there. Like we're, we're taking, we're taking and we're not going to ask for your help because we're taking. So that was really interesting to me. I was really, I was laughing at that. Um, Oh, you said the medicine mound sounds like they were from Marabout, perhaps. I, they did say, he did say what village they were from. I just missed it, but I'm going to definitely have to watch what village um, Sergin Mada was from. I'm definitely going to have to watch it to see where it was. But it was all really, really interesting. And there were so many symbolisms um, around like... Um, capitalism and class, as well as um, like oppression and, and oh, and the other things is, is like uh, anti, um, like the internalized oppression and like, what are we doing to um, like undo that and how we view ourselves and how we view our people. So that was really huge. I felt like in the movie and Rama really, um, you know, was a symbolism of that. Um, 
and then even towards the end where he was forced to align himself um, because he was no longer with the petty bourgeois. And it's so like, how do we work on ourselves internally as Africans to continue to decolonize and see ourselves as one community, to see ourselves as unified and to do that in solidarity. And we saw that in what the, um, um, and what the people did in their like drought, they came together and they put their money together to get food. And even the men who came out of the desert, desert right, is like, how do we unify? And, and so it's like those symbolisms were really um, popping up um, in the movie and really speaks volumes to like what AAPRP is about and what like any African liberation organization is about that really is embedded, um, focused on our people. And so I really appreciated that, um, like all throughout. And we also saw that in the uh, individual who um, had to, there was a, there was a car accident and the community, you know, got together to make sure that that person was okay. And so um, these spammers are going in, they must have like, total so many different accounts y'all so we're deleting them as fast as they're coming in now um so uh yeah so th th that's really interesting and i think that not that i think like we know how critical that is for us to be um like unified and come together because the oppressors are just so um they have all these strategies um that they've been implementing for generations right um but but um we just we're out organized but we also know um the we're out organized so that's why we need everyone being involved in an organization right so we're working as a collective to create um like that one unified socialist africa to create community defense and so for um like like growing our own food together um, being in community together, like all those different things, because these systems do not care about us. That was very clear in this movie um, that the government is does not care. They they don't care for like the people and what the people have access to um, and not have access to. And that's something, you know, that we see that Ed Hajid experienced it, experienced. Uh, he was part of it. He was a contributor to um, the destruction of his people. And then now was on the other side of, of um, now on the other side of like, I wanna align myself because this is wrong. Um, and so sometimes that happens. Sometimes people don't build critical consciousness until they're impacted and it comes close to home. Um, and, and some people get activated and involved because they're able to like see clearly see what's happening in our communities um, that happens to Africans. Um, so we thank you for joining AAPRP for our film series today. We're gonna be back um, in June, the second Saturday of the month. And um, we're so excited for you all to join us. These films are, are really great because it gives us an opportunity to like have some discussion, um, uh, I know Anya Sabu wasn't able to be here because she is out in the community with some other comrades gathering soil for um, the garden. We're so excited about the garden where we're able to grow food, um, grow food, do also medicine together. And um, so excited for that. And so if you are in Tiwa territory, definitely um, please join us. Um, we'll be out there at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. You can check out the AAPRP Facebook page or any social media spaces. We'll have food, community, some political education, um, and we'll be planting together, like planting uh, many different things, uh, tomatoes, peppers, um, eggplant, lots of different things to grow food together. So we look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you so much.